Hello, welcome to our mini lesson on trigonometric ratios. And although it sounds kind of hard, we're just going to go over the basics and hopefully lay some foundations for maybe some future math classes. Um, let's start out by looking at the vocabulary of triangles, right angle triangles specifically. If you have a right angle triangle, angle A and B are both going to be acute angles, meaning that they're going to be less than 90 degrees, because angle C is exactly 90 degrees. So that's the first thing, is that when we talk about the acute angles, we're talking about angles A and B, and then C is going to be the 90 degree angle. These sides here, the shorter length sides, are called legs, and the longest length is called the hypotenuse, okay, and the hypotenuse length is always going to be opposite the right angle of the triangle. All right? So that's some basic vocabulary. Let's look at some more parts. Um, when you have the triangle ABC, the line labels are going to be the opposite of the angles and in lower case. So for example, this is angle B. So this line would be line lowercase b. All right, same with this one. This would be C, so it's called C. A is called A, right? So these would be the labels for the lines. You label them the opposite of the angle, and you give them the lowercase letter, OK? The third thing that we're going to be looking at is new vocabulary, specifically related to trigonometric functions, or ratios, I'm sorry. When we have a point or an angle like this, we're picking angle A, the line that's right next to it is called the adjacent line. The hypotenuse is always going to be called the hypotenuse, so you know that that one, although it's next to A, is not the adjacent line because it is the hypotenuse. So for A, we would say this is the adjacent line right here, and the opposite line is the one right over here, opposite. And that'll be labeled in lowercase a, just like we said earlier. So the opposite is called the opposite. The adjacent is the adjacent. And the hypotenuse will always remain the hypotenuse. So this is labeled according to a. If we were going to label it according to b, this side would be the adjacent side. And this side would be opposite b, because it's across from the angle of b. All right? So let's look at a triangle here. Um, the ratios, I guess we'll look at ratios first, and then we'll do some examples just to show you what I mean. The ratio, or a trigonometric ratio, is a ratio of the sides of the triangle. So for example, you can have a ratio of this side over that side. That would be called A over C. We can have a ratio of this side over this side or this side over this side. Okay, it's just basically a fraction or a ratio of the sides of a triangle. And with our example here, we're going to be looking at three basic trigonometric ratios, or three specific ratios that are common and that have some patterns that are kind of nice. The first ratio is called sine and it will be the opposite of our hypotenuse. And don't worry, I'm going to show you this in some examples. Um, this makes a lot more sense, I think, next slide when I actually show a triangle. The cosine is the adjacent line over the hypotenuse. And the tangent would be the opposite side over the adjacent side. Let's take a look at that. So I've put the information up here. It's going to stay up here for the rest of the mini lesson. And Let's look at this triangle now. If we're looking for the sine of A, so we're starting with A, and we're looking at the sine, we're going to be getting the opposite over the hypotenuse. So A, the opposite over hypotenuse would be A over C, lowercase a, lowercase c. Okay. The cosine of A, remember cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we would take this adjacent line of B, put it over the hypotenuse, of C, and that would be the cosine of A. 
And then the tangent of A is the opposite, or lowercase a, over the adjacent, lowercase b. All right, let's, let's um, practice for a little bit here. I've given these lengths actual numbers now. So let's go ahead and find the sine of A. What would be the sine of A? Well, it's the opposite over the hypotenuse, so the sine of A would be 4 over 5. See, now it makes a little bit more sense because we're actually putting some numbers in there. So if we were to say, what's the sine of A? That would be equal to 4 over 5. All right, let's look at the cosine of A. Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse. So we look at this and we say the adjacent is 3, the hypotenuse is 5. So our cosine is equal to 3 over 5. The next part is the tangent, which is the opposite over the adjacent. So the tangent of A is the 4 over 3. All right, so that's essentially what we're looking at. We're looking at ratios of these sides of the triangle. All right, now let's use those ratios to actually do something. This is the part where we're going to hopefully connect together some ideas. It says, if the cosine of A is 0 0.8, what is the length of B? Well, our first step is that B is not labeled on this triangle, so let, let's use the information we had from f in the beginning. B, lowercase b, is the length of this side here, okay? It's the opposite of the uppercase b. So what we're trying to find is the length from point A to point C, or the length of b. We're given the information that the cosine of A is 0 0.8. Well, let's recall what we know here. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, I always see that there, cosine is adjacent of, over hypotenuse. So in this case, the cosine of A would be equal to B over 10, right? The adjacent line over the hypotenuse. I've substituted in that my value here. The cosine of A is equal to 0 0.8. The adjacent is B, and the hypotenuse is 10. Now we have something that looks really familiar, and we can solve this pretty easily. We're going to use cross multiplication. We'll multiply both sides of this equal sign times 10. All right, and that eliminates our fraction. And 0 0.8 times 10 is equal to 8. So the length of this side is 8. Okay, and that's, that's how we connect together all of these ideas. The ideas of labeling, the idea of using your cosine, and actually using some math to solve for the length of your line. And so that is a little bit complicated, but fortunately now that you've seen an example, hopefully you can take this together. I didn't have enough time to make lots of examples, but you can go home to your friends and tell them this. You can tell them, I know how to use a trigonometric ratio to find the length of the opposite or adjacent side of any right angle triangle given the length of the hypotenuse and the sine or cosine of the corresponding acute angle. And you can be cool just like me, Mr. Buffington. There I am. All right, I hope you had a fun time. I hope that this made sense. If not, make sure to talk to your math teacher about it and use this mini lesson to try and do well on all of the trigonometric ratios you'll be looking at. Have a wonderful day.